Hello everybody, today I'm going to try to get you through the essentials of the critical path method. We've discussed about uh, uh, project networks and how you construct an activity or node network and now we need to get into the calculations. So let's suppose that we have a very simple example. Okay, don't hold me on that, it's not a, a clear depiction of reality obviously, but for uh, the illustrative purposes that we want to achieve here, I think it's fine. So you have uh, um, this uh, small construction project. Let's assume that these are the uh, works that uh, we care about at this stage. So it's framing, dry in, utilities first fixed, utilities second fixed, glazing and inspection. You have four columns on the table. Um, so the ID, which is very handy when you are having a, a, a network to work on, instead of putting whole names, you just put the ID of the activity. Uh, you have the predecessors. Remember that predecessors are the activities that need to be completed before you can start the activity on hand. And of course you have duration that can be expressed a, uh, in um, um, anything like weeks or days or months or um, uh, whatever you prefer, depending on the duration of the, of the project. Um, the first thing that you need to do, obviously, is to construct a network. And you should be able to construct a network, a project network, by now. Um, that's the network, how it's going to become. Don't forget that you need to always start with the milestone, which is the starting milestone. You may not see in the table, uh, uh, which describes the activities, the predecessors and the durations, but you have it, so you're starting it, you're starting your project, so you have a milestone, uh, which is the ST, now denoted as ST, which is for start. And then, uh, the algorithm for uh, creating a project network will tell you that you need to put initially the activities that do not have any predecessors, that's A in this case, and then as you put activities on the diagram, make sure that you put next the activities that all the predecessors have already been placed on the network. So if, for instance, you take B, you see that A has already been put on the network, so you can put B after A and then C after A, and then D after B and C, which would mean that in order to start activity D, both activities B and C have to be completed already. So following this pattern, you will come up to the end of the network, which ends always on a milestone as well. And this milestone would be the finishing milestone or the end milestone, call it whatever you like. Uh, but make sure that everything starts with a milestone and finishes with a milestone. In this case, when we're doing the CPM, we need to provide information within the nodes. Remember that when you were doing the network, the only thing that you had to have uh, was the, um, just a depiction of the node with the ID or the name of the activity. But now you need to do calculations. And in order to do calculations, you need to have information in the nodes. So we picked Larson's um, node representation that they ha uh, Larson has the starting points uh, um, on the left, early start, late start, finishing points on the right, early finish, late finish. And uh, uh, he also depicts the total slack and the duration on the node. Always put the legend so that there is no confusion of what you're doing. Okay. What's the first easy thing that you can do when you have started with your network? Obviously, the easiest thing that you do, can do is to add to every activity on the network the duration of the activity. Uh, if you read the table, then you will see that these are the durations for each activity. Obviously, the milestones, by definition, have a duration of zero. So start and finish, duration of zero, even if I don't have any information about it um, in the table. Activity A lasts for four weeks, B for six, C for four, and so on. So that's the easy thing. The second thing that you need to do is to start the forward pass. Remember, blue arrow, when you do the forward pass, you take maximum values on merging activities. And I will explain what this means. So suppose that everything starts uh, at the point of zero. So early start for uh, the starting node is zero. Remember that the early finish is early start plus the duration. The milestones have no duration, so it's zero. So practically zero plus zero makes obviously zero. And see the uh, little formula 
that we have uh, at the bottom of the slide, which is early start for the current activity, the activity that we're working now, is maximum of early finish of the predecessors. If you have only one predecessor, then obviously this maximum um, calculation is pointless. You have only one thing. But there might be cases that we will see later in the network that you may have more than one predecessor. And this is where max is taking over and it is important. So for activity A, obviously the early start of the activity is going to be same as the early finish of the previous activity, which is zero. So that practically means that you are going to start activity A at the point zero in time. And of course, if you start it at zero and it lasts for four weeks, the early finish of the activity is going to be four as well. Uh, let, me remind you, let me remind you here that the early start is practically the quickest that an activity can start if everything that precedes this activity happens in time. That's, a, that's the point of early start. If we, that is the point of early start. If we uh, uh, um, move on to activity B and C, activity B and activity C, both of them have only one activity as uh, uh, predecessor, and this is A. So the early start of them would be identical to the early finish. They will be able to start as soon as A finishes. So early start of B and early start of C would be equal to the early finish of A. And this is four. And obviously by adding the duration of uh, uh, each activity, you will get their early finish. So B, for instance, is four plus six makes 10. So 10 is the early finish of activity B. Now, let's watch what is happening with activity D. Activity D doesn't have only one predecessor. Activity D have, uh, has two predecessors which practically means that now it's time to utilize the formula and take the maximum. So early finish of B is 10, early finish of C is 8, maximum of 8 or 10 is 10, so activity D can start at time point 10. And this is how you complete the rest of the network. Um, check activity F as well, for instance, you have to choose between 12 and 10. 12 is the early finish of activity D and 10 is the early finish of activity E. So uh, you have to take the maximum. Remember the blue arrow on top. When you do the forward pass, when you go from left to right, you take maximum values. And this will tell us that this project is gonna practically finish when uh, uh, um, 14 weeks have passed. So the milestone of the end is uh, very important because it tells us when the project is going to finish. Now, which is the next step? We have done the forward pass. So what we know now, what we can tell now, what we can answer up to this point is how long it takes for this project to be completed. The next thing that we want to do in order to move to the ba backward pass is to make sure that the late finish of the finishing activity is equal, we make it equal to the early finish of the finishing activity. And we do that because we want to create a critical path. You will understand this as soon as uh, uh, we finish this video. So here, there you go. Um, late, late uh, uh, early finish uh, was 14, late finish becomes 14 as well. And now when you move from right to left, you do the opposite thing that what you have done before. So you calculate first the late finish and then you calculate um, the late start. And obviously the late start would be the late finish of the activity minus its duration. So for instance, here you will have uh, uh, 14 minus zero is 14 because zero is the duration of that activity. Remember, when you do the backward pass, look the arrow above, you take minimum values. That's it. Let's do activity F. So for activity F, the uh, late finish, now see the formula, the late finish of the current activity, which is F in our case, should be the minimum of the late start of its successors. Again, when you have only one successor for an activity, there is no problem, you don't need the mean. It's only one thing. You take late finish of current equals late start of uh, the successor. But when you have more than one successor, and this is going to be the case when you have bursting activities, 
this is when you should be considering the minimum value. So f has only one successor, which is finish. Uh, late start of finish is 14, so late finish of f should be on 14 as well. 14 minus 2, which is the duration of activity f, will lead us to uh, get the late start of activity f, which is 12. You do the same thing for activity d and e. So you equalize practically the late finish of these two activities with the late start of their only unique successor, d and e. Both of them have only one successor, which is f. And then you go to activity c. Activity c uh, has two successors. Obviously, you have to uh, calculate the late start of d and e before you go to C. But now you have to pick a value. In this specific case, the values are the same. So the late start of activity D and the late start of activity E happen to be identical, 10. So minimum between 10 and 10 is obviously 10. It's, it's, it's one number. There you go. 10 minus 4 will give the, the late start of activity C, and you can do the same for activity B and get these results. Now, look at activity A. Activity A has two successors. So, in this case, the late start of activity B is 4, but the late start of activity C is 6. This is where we need to calculate through the formula, and the formula will tell us that we have to take the minimum value. So 4 and 6, minimum value is 4, which practically means that the late finish of activity A is 4. And 4 minus 4 equals 0, and 0 becomes the late finish of the starting milestone. 0 minus 0, 0. Uh, there you go. You have all your calculations ready. So now we have completed the backward pass. What is the next step? What do we know now? Why have we done the backward pass? Just because by doing the backward, the backward pass, we are able to calculate the total slack. We are able to calculate the floats. And this is very, very important. How do we calculate the floats? Total slack or total float equals late start, late start minus early start for um, any activity on the network. So you get, look at the legend. You have late start at the bottom left corner and early start at the top left corner. Uh, you, do the, uh, uh, um, you do the subtraction and you get the float. So for instance, 0 minus 0 for start is 0, 0 minus 0 for A is 0, uh, but here if you do C, it's 6 minus 4 makes 2, which means that activity C has a float of 2 weeks. You keep doing that for the rest of the network and you have calculated all the total floats. What is the important thing now? What, what do we get for that? We get to know the critical path. What is a critical activity? A critical activity is the one that has no float at all, which practically means that total slack is zero and early start equals late start. What's the result? We cannot delay this activity at all. Or if we do, this delay is going to be passed straight to the end of the project. If we delay a critical activity for one week, then the whole project is going to last one week longer unless we do something about it. So in order to uh, identify the critical path, what we do is that we identify the activities that have zero slack and with red arrows, uh, we denote the critical path. Okay. Um, let me summarize what we have done so far, how the CPM method, uh, the critical path method works. The first thing that we need to do is obviously to have the table that will tell us the predecessors, first of all the activities, the predecessors of the activities and the duration of the activities. That's one thing. The second thing that we need to do is to create the network itself. Then we add the durations of the network, then we add all the durations on the network, the second, the, the, the uh, next step would be to uh, do the forward pass, and by doing that, we're calculating the early start and early finish of the activities, and then we go backwards, 
to do the backward pass and calculate the late finish and the late start of each activity. Then we can calculate the float, which is late start minus early start, and the activities without any float, with a float of zero, will, will uh, uh, be the critical activity. And then we are able to uh, design the critical path on the network.